Well, golly gee, Jim Bob. There's been a major automotive international incident in southeastern Shitsville. Corporate espionage, lawsuits and arrest. Two private Ratatastani companies duking it out on our turf. Down there. Yes. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where skiing new car buyers save thousands of their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. At the recent Miracle Cure for Insomnia trade show, which I think is also called the Auto Aftermarket Expo, sparks flew between two battery charging retardistani companies you've probably never heard of. There was actually a highly charged exchange. The cops were called, you know, there was even an arrest. And sadly, this took place without resistance. That would have been just perfect in the domain of journalism. Anywho, the alleged victim here is a company called NOCO. That is N-O-C-O. It's a 105-year-old Cleveland, Ohio-based maker of battery jump starters and other things of that nature. Allegedly, Noco had a critical notebook knocked off by an employee of a competitor you've also probably never heard of called C-Tech. It's like Alien versus Predator, only with battery chargers at a trade show in Shitsville. The employee stole a notebook from Noco's booth that contained Noco's sales strategy, contacts, and valuable trade secrets. The SeaTech employee, whose name has not yet been released, was arrested by Australian authorities. That's an excerpt from an award-winning press release from Noco, issued just before Easter. And for me, this is like It's like taking the friggin' red pill and waking up for the first time ever outside the Matrix. Things just seem ever so slightly off kilter. See, Noco is a family-controlled multinational company. It was founded by Joseph Henry Nook Sr. It's run today by William Nook and Jonathan Nook. And... I'm wondering if anybody in the company's Glen Willow headquarters in the USA has an IQ above the room temperature in degrees C. Here's why. This is a company with about 80 million bucks in revenue annually. That's in our Schittsvillian micro pesos for 2015. $80 million. What $80 million company just leaves its core sales strategy just lying around in a friggin' notebook? Noco is, according to itself, a world-leading designer, marketer, and manufacturer of premium consumer battery chargers, jump starters, and a wide range of portable power devices. Bit of a self-confessed genius, then. In fact, one of its products is... Yep, Noco Genius. Dangerous name, isn't it? Anything genius. It's just setting yourself up for a fall, don't you think? It's like anything expert. Just makes you look like a world-class wanker. Anywho, the Noco Geniuses, right? Smart enough to jam 22 and a half kilojoules into a jump starter. Yes. Can't password protect a sales plan, though. Go figure. Not only that... I'm always of two minds about this. Do I answer it or just put it back on the hook? Away! Really? Really? You're aware that There's been an arrest, so this is probably uh, sub-judice, it'd be fair to say, don't you think? (laughs) What do you mean, don't worry about it? 
Don't worry about contempt of court. Good advice. Journalism 101. Easy for you to say with your ass not standing in front of the camera hanging out in a breeze. <sighs> okay. Be it on your head then. I love you too. Bye. I'm being told the Bullshit News Network Investigative Journalism Division has procured exclusively the sales strategy at the centre of this very lawsuit. Yep. I guess that's one way to do it. And I can see why they'd be miffed with that valuable information getting into the wrong hands. Officials with the Australian Automotive Aftermarket Association recovered the video surveillance which captured the event and led to the identification of the SeaTech employee responsible for the theft. I think they mean alleged theft. Security at the AAA located the SeaTech employee and detained him until local authorities arrived and arrested him. So a sleepy little trade show in Up Itself is Stan, also known as Melbourne, which thinks it's an international sort of European city, but in fact... It's not, you know, Melbourne just hates the fact that Sydney gets the views, the beaches and the morally ambiguous bikini-clad hotties. What can I say? Citizens arrest, amateur sleuths a go-go, video surveillance, it's all very dramatic, isn't it? I'm just sorry there wasn't, um, mate, um, what's that word that there should have been at the event? To, just to cap it all off, that, um, yes. That's the word. A gangland style execution. Glacé cherry right there. Sadly absent. Oh well. But we have investigated the contacts in the alleged notebook too, I'll have you know, and apparently there were only two. It's always the quiet ones, isn't it? You know? Yeah. And I think that always seems a waste too, don't you? Like with the nuns, the hot stacked ones. It's, it's a very popular sight as I understand it. Reminds me of the famous Tibetan parable that I'm kind of struggling just to make up in the moment as we speak. Don't start none, won't get none. I think that's in their privacy policy. Not that I would know, not being a frequenter. And the valuable trade secrets... They appear to be emerging as well. Something about red going with positive and black going with earth. We're still confirming that, of course. Obviously, we are disappointed with CTEC's behaviour. Alleged behaviour. Get with the program, you nuts. But it is further evidence of a possible systematic corporate mandate to attempt to curtail Noco's growth in the marketplace. We are aggressively pursuing all of our legal rights and will not stop until justice is served. CTEC's alleged behaviour. I mean, alleged. I mean, come on. Do try to play the PR game with the full deck, even in Retardistan. I want to know, was it corporate espionage? Was there collusion? Perhaps the Russians set it up with Don Jr. Or maybe it was just a lone wolf attack. Here's the hot tip, you knocko dickheads. Upgrade your operational security. Use advanced protocols like password protecting sensitive information or biometrics or both or two-factor authentication. Better still, simply do not bring sensitive information to insecure locations knee-deep in malicious competitors. This is like corporate security advice for abject morons. <laughs> Second, when you do get caught with your operationally insecure trousers around your ankles, humming the opening stanza of Moon River... <laughs> in a foreign land, it's probably not a PR opportunity, I'd suggest. I guess it depends on how badly you want to look like dickheads publicly. And then, obviously, when you get back to Retardistan, just sue the shit out of SeaTech because, hey, America, we're suing because we just couldn't watch our shit. <laughs> just couldn't keep it together. And it's all your fault.
It's not like Ethan Hunt was commissioned by the IMF to intercept vital narco secrets in Mission Impossible Antipodean shitfight. It's not like that at all, really, when you think about it. Back home, Noco filed a lawsuit on April the 16th of Friggin Course, which includes federal claims of theft of trade secrets and conspiracy to steal trade secrets. There are also state-level claims of misappropriation of trade secrets, conversion and theft. So that's nice. What a pity stupidity is not also a crime. Noco is seeking damages, of course, and injunctive protection about the use and dissemination of its very valuable notebook trade secrets. All because they couldn't keep their pants up in friggin' arse trailer. That's a very common, more of a Sydney thing than a Melbourne thing though, obviously. I wouldn't buy a discount bag of rubber dog shit from Noco based on this performance because I hate incompetence. And yes, I am aware that this is a character flaw. And now this, from you. When I'd been with me missus a year, I bought her a tire gauge. Not as an anniversary present. Frankly, you know, I just could not read any more of Mike's comment at that precise point. In other news, some men continue to wonder why, soon after marriage, their wives lose all interest in battering the corn dog, adding banana to the fruit salad, bringing the noodle to the spaghetti house, cattle prodding the oyster. For some reason, these women just don't want to do any of that fun stuff anymore, no matter how enthusiastic they were previously. And men are at a complete loss vis-a-vis an explanation. There's no more checking the marital oil. Mission control issues no further go for docking procedures. The dog goes without a bone, seemingly indefinitely. Interior decorating stalls on the grid. The gates of Mordor remain closed. It becomes impossible to navigate henceforth the Prime Meridian and, of course, nobody gets to... cork the tub. Corking the tub. I don't, every time. I don't know why. But never let it be said that I failed to use the correct medical terminology for Walton Mountain. Good night, Mary Ellen. You have a review of the 2019 Tiguan? Yeah. You're a Muppet if you buy one. Hope that helps. Is that a reflection of Arc Reactor in your sunglasses? I can't stop analysing it. You mean, uh... That Arc Reactor? Yeah. I thought everyone had one. Hashtag Stark Industries. Yes. I like your vids, but CO2 isn't a pollutant. There's nothing wrong with a warming Earth. When the earth is warmer, is wetter, and has more plant and animal biodiversity. As a special offer to you, my loyal auto expert viewers, collect the complete conspiracy box set now. Yes. For a short time only, volume one, the earth still flat, plus God is real, but the world is only 6,000 years old. And vaccines that kill. Also, Queen Elizabeth still ruling the lizard people. Yes. And CO2, mankind's friend. Plus, my personal favourite, why we never went to the moon. Six DVDs, just $39.95. And check out the bonus featurette. Isaac Newton was wrong. And you can prove it for yourself using just a third floor balcony and a step stool. You know you want this. But first, subscribe and hit the bell notification icon thingy for Ouija board notifications. Now you also know that CO2 is not the reason for climate change. The heat is in the water. Our air conditioner cools rooms by taking the water out of the air. Boom! Okay, so just a minor point of order on this. The heat is specifically not in the water. Not unless it was recently ice. The heat is actually in the water vapour and that's what you must add to liquid water to get it to jump out of that liquid state and up into the air. And this, of course, is why we sweat. 
Automotive air conditioners, on the other hand, chill the car by forcing its interior air through the convective core of an evaporator in which a refrigerant absorbs heat from the air which it requires to change phase on the way through. So the air gets cold and the refrigerant heats up, not coincidentally by exactly the same amount, and then it heads for the condenser. Refrigerators work in exactly the same way. Condensation is a curious byproduct and absolutely nothing more. See, this is what happens when you study. It's a living hell because everything just about stops being magic and the people around you, they seem to get increasingly dumb with a few notable exceptions. And of course, if you study, you are left in no doubt whatsoever about why extraterrestrial life declines to drop by on us for afternoon tea once again on every friggin' day ending in Y. Boom. <laughs>